The front four of the Baltimore Colts leads the league in getting personal with quarterbacks. And no one inflicts more damage than number 76, defensive tackle Joe Ehrman. That was sportscaster Dick Schaap reporting in 1976 about the Baltimore Colts' Joe Ehrman. Back then, Ehrman was a hard-partying lineman. But now, the former All-American defensive tackle who helped lead the Colts to three straight division titles is an ordained minister and a volunteer coach for Baltimore's Gilman High School football team. And he is teaching his players a valuable lesson that success has nothing to do with being a sports hero or making lots of money. His story is told in the book called Season of Life, which Sports Illustrated called tremendously touching. It is written by Pulitzer Prize winner Jeffrey Marks, whose own story intersects with Joe's in some pretty amazing ways. And we're joined now by Jeffrey Marks and Joe Ehrman. Jeff, this all started when you read that the state of Maryland was going to tear down the old Colt Stadium, and you had a lot of history there. Yeah, that was a very big blow to me because Memorial Stadium was like a childhood home away from home for me. I was a ball boy with the Colts for many years, starting when I was 11 years old. And Joe Ehrman was one of the star players on that team. He had a huge impact on my childhood. And I decided to make a farewell visit to that stadium and thought I was going to write a story about the stadium itself and some of those memories. But what I found as I was leaving, I thought more about the players and the coaches and everything I had learned from them. And I set off on a journey. I wanted to find as many of those guys as I could and see what had happened with their lives, and, and that's how I found Joe. And there were 200 and some odd men over the period of years that Memorial Stadium was in action. Where was Joe on the list of well, folks of this, to find? Yeah, of the 212 men, he was actually the 85th guy that I found, and it was clearly the most important call. I hadn't called Joe for 18 years. A lot of time had passed, and I was just hoping he'd remember me, first of all, yeah. uh, and he did, and, and we had a wonderful conversation. The Joe that I found now, uh, a minister in Baltimore, a pastor in a church with 4,000 members, a guy who had done so much in the community, and also a high school football coach on the side, but only because it was a great context in which to implement his Building Men for Others program. And Joe, when you got this call out of the blue from Jeffrey Marks, Jeffrey Marks, oh yeah, that was this kid who was a ball boy a million years ago. Uh, beyond that, did you have any recognition? Oh yeah, I remember him clearly, and I to this day remember he was an adorable 11-year-old boy, and if I remember, I was just walking from to practice to practice and stopped and started talking with this boy, and then he became an integral part of uh, the life of the team. And you invited him to come down, talk to you, see what was going on in your life. Mm -hmm. And Jeff, when you got down there to practice, what did you see? I saw something unlike anything I'd ever seen with any other sports program on any level, high school, college, or professional in the country. I saw the first day of practice, a coach standing before 100 boys on a high school football field yelling out, what is our job? Our job as the coaches and the boys yell back in unison to love us. What is your job? And the boys yell back to love each other. And I'm left standing there thinking, what in the world is going on here? Is this football? And it, it really intrigued me, and I wanted to learn more, and I ended up sticking around for an entire season. I had no expectation of doing that. Nothing about winning, nothing about kill the competition, none of that typical football stuff. And they're very successful on the field. Three of the last six years, they've been undefeated and ranked uh, number one in the state of Maryland. But they're not all about points on the scoreboard. They're all about things like empathy, inclusion, mm -hmm. integrity, living a life of service to others. That's what I saw unfold on the football field at Gilman, and that's why I really wanted to write the Season of Life book. And Joe, for you to get to a point in life when you've gone from 13 years as a professional athlete, an All-American at Syracuse when you were a college player, to a minister with a flock of 4,000, plus this high school team, there must have been some pretty monumental events in your life. Tell me about the, the path you traveled. Well, I think like most boys, I was giving all these lies about masculinity, and I thought that somehow if I could just get to the NFL, I would find meaning and purpose in my life. I found nothing but futility and chaos in that lifestyle, and uh, during the course of that, I watched my little brother die of cancer. I spent mm -hmm. five months on a pediatric oncology floor. He died within five months during the course of a season. It was standing uh, at his funeral next to his casket, next to the open grave. Uh, my teammates had come and the Buffalo Bills and hundreds for this 18-year-old kid. I remember the last amen being said and everybody turned and walked away. Now I had acquired and achieved beyond my wildest expectations, but at that moment I realized I had no sense of what purpose in life is about. Where does meaning and value, because what I had given my life to 
brought me none of that. And all of this garbage about teamwork and players and we're there for you, in your darkest moment, they left you alone at the grave. Well, it wasn't... They supported me as best they could, but the lifestyle and the whole cultural values about uh, how do you find meaning as a man or a woman in this world, total futility and emptiness in that. My life was a life of very narcissistic, acquiring and achieving mm -hmm. to validate my own insecurities about my manhood and relationships with my dad and a, a number of issues. And yet your mantra today is the only way to measure greatness is the impact on others' lives. What you're now doing with these high school players, some of whom come from really affluent homes and others mm -hmm. who take two buses to get to school every day. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are three basic lies that every boy is told and was told in my generation and it's taught by dad to their sons today. And the three lies are this, is that the first thing you learn on the playground of elementary school is that you can measure manhood based on athletic ability. So that boy that can catch it down and out or hit the hanging curve, somehow he's seen as a little more valuable, mm. a little more manly, if you would. Those other boys are sent to the peripheral of the playground, kind of deflated or demoted. Then when you hit adolescence, you're taught in this country that masculinity can be measured in sexual conquest. The ability to bring women alongside of them, to use them to gratify your needs or to validate who and what you are. That's a lie. And then later on in life, it has to do with economic success. That men, you can, you can measure them by their power, position, or possessions in a society. All of those are lies and create all kinds of social uh, chaos in this community. And if those are the lies that boys have been taught growing up, you've discovered what you think are the truths that can make them the fine men that they want to be. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of Joe Ehrman's philosophy and hear the specifics of a program that is now required reading in some pro football locker rooms around the country. Stick around. We're back now talking with Jeffrey Marks. His new book is called A Season of Life. It's an amazing story of how one man has helped transform the lives of young boys um, in Maryland. And uh, the uh, protagonist, I guess, is Joe Ehrman, former football player for the Baltimore Colts and other teams. Um, Jeff, when you got down to the Gilman Greyhounds and right. saw what Joe was doing with these boys, it wasn't just, we're there to love each other. You saw a lot more, not only on the field, but also around the school. Well, I saw so many things going on that happened in no other sports program and probably no other high school in America. And so Joe Ehrman had done so much for so many for so long in the state of Maryland that he had almost become like a living, breathing state park. And there I am standing there as a guy uh, uh, about to enter my 40s who had known him since I was 11 years old. And I thought, what in the world do I do with this? I'm not the brightest guy in North America, but I am a writer and I figured, you know, this is a story I'm supposed to tell. I wanted to take this living, breathing state park and share him with America because I thought the messages were that important. And yet you went to Simon & Schuster, you had the book proposal like right. you're supposed to, and they said, sorry, Charlie, don't right. think so. But that didn't stop you. No, well, and they weren't the only ones that passed. There were a, a couple nibbles but no bites, and the reality is I probably didn't write a very good book proposal. Uh, I'd like to think and I hope that the book turned out better than the book proposal, and I did decide to go ahead and self-publish it on my own, and we had a wonderful... Uh, run for a year and a half with that and now the new Simon & Schuster hardcover edition just came out in uh, the 1st of September. And, and it is getting read in places that you don't necessarily expect to see guys holding books and that's locker rooms like the Dallas Cowboys are reading it. Joe, it's page after page after page of message but if you had to boil down what you believe are the essential qualities of a fine man, what would they be? Well I think the only way you can measure success in life, success as a man, comes down to two criteria. And I know this from my own personal experience and I know this from my role as a pastor helping people die. At the end of your life, when you're going to look back over whether you've been successful, the first criteria is going to be in terms of relationships. Did I love and did I allow people to love me? And the measures of success are going to be what kind of husband was I? What kind of wife was I? What kind of mother? What kind of father? What kind of son? What kind of daughter? And how can you teach that to boys on the football field? Oh, we teach them that almost every single day. It's all about relationships. A, a team is nothing but a moral community that has shared expectation, and you have to learn how to be other-centered. Find your well-being in the midst of a community. Mm -hmm. It's a relational connectivity is why you want to play these sports. You scored the football 
um, goal, but I'm so excited that you did. Exactly happy right. for you. And the blockers were just as important as everybody else, and everybody has a role. So if you ever wanted to create good moral citizens, it's in the concepts of team. Mm -hmm. Because in team, there's a spirituality, which means that you have to transcend yourself. It's not just about your goals, hopes, and longings. You find your well-being in the midst of the community. And the other thing? The other thing besides relationship is all of us ought to be able to look back over and know that we had some kind of cause in our life, a transcendent cause, a cause that's bigger than your own personal goals, hopes, wants, and longings, and just going through this world to accumulate or to acquire. It's knowing that wherever there was pain and injustice and suffering that you walked in with words of love and mercy, acceptance, and spoke justice into all of the unfairness and the problem in this world. You ought to be able to look back over and know the world was a better place because you live and you loved and you made a difference. And Jeffrey, how are you different from having spent a year with this man, mm -hmm. growing with the team, and hearing that mantra as well? Well, the biggest thing for me, in addition to watching the boys grow, which was an incredible experience in itself, was my own personal growth in my relationship with my dad. Really? Uh, my dad, a 70-year-old man, you don't teach an old dog new tricks, but in this case, uh, and I'm, I don't mean to call my dad an old dog, by the way, but a uh, wonderful man. I knew he always loved me. He's always been a wonderful father, but he was missing a bit of the emotional piece, uh, the ability to express his emotions. He was always been a stoic, his uh, thermometer kind of stuck in the middle on the emotional mm -hmm. scale. And I took some of these messages to him at the end of the season because I knew that when I look back on my life uh, and I want to know with this relationship piece that I did everything I could with my father, with everyone in my life, but especially in this case with my father based on what I learned. And he had a wonderful response. And What did you do? What did you say? Well, I went up Thanksgiving weekend, actually, of 2001, and uh, he knew that I was working on this project, and he knew I had something I wanted to talk to him about. But it was a very difficult conversation to have, and I think it's, it's one that has not only been inspiring to me and to my family, but to so many others now because they can take that and the way I wrote about it in the book, and now they're sharing that with their families and applying it to their own lives and their relationships, which is actually the most meaningful thing on a personal level that's come out of this whole project, is seeing people do that. Sometimes I love you. Three little words, very difficult to say. Little words, simple words, but incredibly powerful words, and especially when they come to you from the one man in your life who you love and respect more than any other, and that's, of course, my dad. Just an example of how uh, Joe Ehrman is changing people. And when we come back, we're going to meet a young man who was once on his team. Now he's playing football for Duke University. And we'll hear how Joe Ehrman changed his life. So stick around.